Hey, I'm glad you're here. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you. What's up, those boys fans? Thank you so much for joining us today. First things first, please subscribe down below. Hit that like button. Hit the fucking like button. Mm. Thanks. Oh, man. Daddy made that tight. <laughs> Sibilance. Check, check. check. One. I mean, I'm not going to be talking this loud. It's not like I'm Eminem or Kanye. But Lord knows I ain't finished. God ain't finished. Testing, testing. Yep. Yep. And we're good to testing, go. Testing, testing. We are good to go, baby. Cool, 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 cool. Cool, cool, cool. Zero sugar, man. I can taste it. Um, all right. Should I have neck? Should I go Guido this time? Little necklace out. Yeah. I'm going to Guido up this time. We don't really have anybody behind the cameras that are like, I tuck your shirt, tuck them back in, tuck it in. I feel like because everything's riding me. So we're, do we, we are so Guido today. But that's just kind of our truth, huh? Beauty hurts. Beauty hurts. You know, we learned that from the queen bee herself. All right, welcome to episode Beauty six of Those Boys. Turn the lights on. I feel like I'm pretty far from the mic. You're fine. You are. Yeah, yeah. you are. No, you are. Oh, thanks, man. Episode six of the six, right? Or is this five? Six. What's up, Those Boys fans? Welcome back to episode. Or welcome back to the Those Boys podcast, episode six. Six. Yes. Um, which is awesome. Yeah. Right? We actually missed last week because of your fucking birthday. Yeah. We we're all camping we're in 35 little, uh, degree. Uh, on a tight schedule right now because uh, it's we really not ahead. that. If you think about it, it's not really that tight. It's tight for you because mm. you were literally doing everything. And mm. so I want to applaud you. Actually, there's mu every episode we should applaud you. Mm. I really do believe that. Mm. And so starting episode six, because I feel like we're in the halfway. Yeah, mark, let's do it. Let's give me an applause. No, I, if you, yeah, no. if you get in the way of this right now, I will cut this off. I will remove this from the show. As a producer of the show, I will remove this okay. from the show. How, how are you going to go about doing? Anyways, that? I think that I I, th I think I think that starting every episode, we need to applaud the editors of the show, okay. and we need to give more respect to the back of house. Mm. The back of house doesn't. Would you agree? Back of house doesn't get. There's not much respect. I mean, this business is going down. There's not much respect for the back of back house. Back of house. There's, yeah. well, I mean, every business doesn't really respect yeah. back of house nearly as much as they should. Yeah. So here, as a producer, as a CEO, as front of house, yeah, um, I want to applaud the editors of Those Boys podcast, which is also Zach Blossom. Sweet. Thanks for that. Thank you for for applauding me. I appreciate being applauded. I thought we had we did it. We used to have an applause. We did. Right? We yeah. changed things up a little bit. Yeah. Get a little mix, a little messy. But um, thank you for all of your hard work, Zach. We appreciate it. You're doing an amazing job. I uh, have all my notifications on. I downloaded Twitter for this. I mean, not Twitter, uh, TikTok. TikTok. And so I get all these notifications, and I know that every single time I get a notification, I'm like, Oh, Zach's. Working again, added, editing more, making more shorts, doing yep. this and that. And then all yep. of a sudden I get a phone call and it's Zach and he's all, oh my God, dude, I just watched this new Gary V video on TikTok and it's shit. I mean, man, three videos a day, every single day, and then four or five, and then we do 90 days, 90 day this. Bless you. Thanks. How's the short coming? Uh, the one that, yeah, the one that I, well, so yeah, we had a big conversation about this last night. You want to, want to <laughs> rehash it out? <laughs> no, I was just stabbing you in the gut real quick. <sighs> Thought it started out this strong. Um, but no, I'm being honest and saying that we've, t we talked so much about what this is and all the hard work and we're just so busy in our personal lives and hello, Obi. Welcome back. And we were supposed to do a podcast uh, for my birthday. Yeah, we tried. But camping was a little... What did, the yeah. elements were a little tougher, and we decided to not do it, uh, which is fine. I actually think it was really good that we chose to not do it. We weren't in the headspace to do it. Well, so, and we, not to interrupt, but we filmed that short, and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, there's just so much going on in my life with parenting and everything else that I set expectations to being able to edit it all, and I think that, like, there's reasons why I haven't even done it because I'm a, I feel really lazy at that part of it. Cause I'm not putting in that editing effort. And, but aside from that, your birthday, we got a lot of wonderful footage on yeah. this camping trip. Yeah. 
and I bought a old school DV tape mm -hmm. camcorder, like the same exact ones we would make our Lego videos with. We were kids, all of our old home videos. Mm -hmm. um, I bought the exact like version of it and uh, we filmed a lot of the uh, weekend on film on DV, mini DV tape. And the one day, the one day we didn't have rain, we got some pretty good footage. Yeah, that was a, that was a wonderful time. We uh, had a great time, but it was a brutal fucking camping, bro. Yeah, it was, yeah. The elements were rough and yeah. real, very real elements, very cold, very cold. Oh my God, at nighttime, man. Yeah, I could not, that first night I could not stay warm, not even in the slightest. And we had our dogs with us and everything and it was very dirty. It was you, Alex, mm -hmm. me, Evan. The two dogs. And the two dogs, Atmore and Maya. Mm-hmm. And it got to like 35 degrees at night. I think it got colder than that, dude. It got colder than that. It was that it was that type of camping where like, you know, so I brought the blow up mattress, the <laughs> one I got from the thrift store, got lucky, and I brought like 10 blankets because I've been camping so many times, but like I don't do sleeping bags anymore. I just make like one. Yeah, we bed. Just, you just make the the tent bed. You dude. make the tent bed where it's just like if it's if it's warm camping, you're like Oh, I can't wait to go into our camp bed and never leave. But <laughs> if it's cold, it's like, I hope it's enough. Yes. <laughs> I hope it's and enough. And it never is. And it's never, never enough. enough. One butt cheek yeah. makes it out about 2.30 a.m. <laughs> One butt cheek. And you're like, oh, <laughs> oh, it's like an icicle butt cheek. And like, that's what woke you up. No, it's more of like your foot. You'll, you'll wake up and be like, my foot is so cold. And it's like, oh, it's out. Why is my foot out? And you'll pull your foot in. But when you pull your foot in, one of the blankets falls off or something. Cause you're like perfectly balanced. And then you'll be like, oh, I gotta put the blanket on, you know, but you don't want to get anything else off. And then you do this. And then you spill a thing of water. That's what happened to me on the first night is I spilled my water bottle and didn't know it and woke up covered in water. I know. I remember. Yeah. Smelling yeah, like mold. <laughs> It was miserable, dude. Uh, and, but like this, the thought of that happening to you and you're so tired. Mm -hmm. So you don't do anything about it, right? Yeah. You just try to go back to sleep. But in that type of cold camping, if you get wet at all, you're fucked. Well, you stay wet. You're you fucked. You stay wet and you get colder. Yeah. Yeah. So it was pretty cold. But happy birthday. Thanks, man. I had a wonderful time. Evan, it's funny. I remember being Evan's age. Like Evan's 11, almost, you know, like yeah. 11, 12 was a lot of my, uh, most, my memories. Most of my core memories are that time. And anything that was like crazy weird camping uh, with mom, dad, or like the church or anything, it was like the memory is just joyful. Yeah. And and then in college, like every other camping we were talking about this, you're, we're fucked up, like drinking every night. Mm -hmm. So the elements are like, <laughs> well, no. <laughs> You know, it's like, and then like you don't drink anymore and you're like, <sighs> it's different. Yeah. You stand by the fire and all of you, we just stand there like holding a mug, like, <sighs> yeah, do I go to bed now or do I try to stay warm for a little bit? I'm going to get it. <laughs> Drinking camping. <laughs> Dude, dude, dude. No, it is not. Don't do that. Don't do that. Come on. That's so something dad would say. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to be a dad. I'm saying for me, when I look at, I have done so much. I've done a lot of crazy camping. And I look back at like camping in Tonto, Arizona with mm. name drop. Love that motherfucker. He's a, uh, he's from Martha's Vineyard. Sails the ocean blue. And he was my college roommate and we would go camping every spring. Everyone would go to Mexico or whatever. And like, we're going to the Cancun. Where are you guys going? We're going to the desert where there's no reception. <laughs> Why? It's 109 degrees during the day and it's we also wanna, 10 degrees at night. We want to go primitive camping and eat a snake. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with us. We want to torture ourselves and come back changed. <laughs> but like. We would go get all of our camping supplies, and the last stop before we'd leave to go camping was always Bevmo. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And it was like a handle of, uh, I can't even remember, but it was like hand, two handles, whiskeys, mm -hmm. like scotch and a whiskey. And we would just, whiskey, ice, and Coca-Cola. And we would just, every, it would like, in the night, just... <laughs> Just chug that, look at the stars, and then make, we would never like it. Just be Christian and I. We just have but the a difference, yeah. Blast. When you're drinking like that, the difference is it's like that Brokeback Mountain. When it's cold, uh, you don't feel the cold as much, and it's, so it's like, hey, it's let's get let's get real you... nice, warm, and drunk, <laughs> right? It's never cold when you just get a yeah. little spit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? 
Totally, dude. Been there. <laughs> that's what that's what it was. That's why we don't do that anymore. <laughs> now I'm camping. Yeah. Bend over cushion. Yeah, it's just all. <laughs> Dude, it's you, a high five. That's how we'd high five. Like what, it's, what's up, remember, bro? It's called. <laughs> love you. Dude, something Alex always does, and it reminds me of like uh, the hood kids back in high school. They would always do this. Where hood was, kids. Who are the hood kids? Can you describe oh, them? For, for us, it was like the gang member kids, kids group in gang families. Oh, yeah. Like the, it's just unfortunate. Like their brothers are in jail. Yeah. It's very unfortunate. <sighs> I know that. Those are all but my the, the, friends. But the too. people from the hood, they'd always slap the same way. Because we always have like slap games where it was like oh, uh, you slap someone's back or something like that. But they'd always spit on their hand. Wait, what? What? Make how it real old hot you? and then slap you. When, how old were you when you were playing slap games? I was never playing. I was just beat. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you're like the white boy. Just the little white you're boy. Like the, and like every like friend that comes over. Hey, Zach. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you can't hit back. You, I, yeah, you never hit back. No, but did, did you have any friends that did that where they like they get your hand like so wet and you get it hot you and were, then you slap? You just were, me and Natalie were like very much involved in the youth group. So when I was before middle school, even and all of middle school, it was like my closest friends was youth group mm. friends. And so, uh, and the thing about homes like homeschoolers and like Christian kids and church kids and youth group kids is for fun. They're like, after youth group, they're like, all right, everybody into the garage. We're going to throw ping pong balls at each other's stomachs. Initiation time. Initiation time. Yay! (laughs) Caused me so much anxiety. I hated it. Like people would be like fucking like, lift up your shirt. Like that type of shit. So I feel like it's a little bit different, like growing up in the church. Yeah. Like there was a lot of pranking because when you're not doing drugs and drinking, you can't fuck. Yeah. You're like, let's just. I want to flirt. I want to flirt with the girls. Yeah, let's go throw like whipped cream on their faces as they're exactly. sleeping. Yeah, it's find, like, find cat food and throw it in their dorm. <laughs> what? Why? We can't do anything else. That's the only form of communication we can use to share the fact that we're hard at night for them and Jesus <laughs> and Jesus. You just at least you bring the Bible with you. Yeah, that's what covered the boner. Do you remember the? Uh, <laughs> I covered put my Bible right there. Yeah. Bloop. Yep. Got to watch um, the devotion. Remember the prank where you would put the shaving cream in the cup and then you would crunch the tip of the cup and put it underneath the door and you'd get the girls to come near the door and then you'd smash the back of the cup and all the whipped cream would go poof, all <laughs> over the room. I never did that. That's brilliant. That was, uh, yeah, I forgot which youth pastor. I just want to point that out one. that the reason why this whole boys versus girls pranks things is because girls are in a, a uh, all girls yeah like, everyone was separated separated and there was no pda no never, personal di- display of affection that was the, the rule. only place there was pda was at gleanings well no even then was you can't have pda but when you're doing like fruit dehydration no dude all the youth pastors the lines, all the youth pastors and everything would get so exhausted because you'd work a 10-hour day on the peach farm so explain what gleanings is then gleanings was you a gotta farm really explain yeah cause... true i forget gleanings was a farm we used to go to um, it's like the mid- over here in Fresno, like the middle of the desert. Yeah. Here in California. Yeah. And we would go there uh, with our church, our youth groups. So the youth groups would meet up all the different churches and it would be like a hundred kids and then a bunch of youth pastors and pastors. And you would basically sleep in their dorms there and then work the peach farm in, in the, during the day. And it was hot. Yeah. It's reeked of sulfur. It was tough work. It was not fun. Um, but it was about a week of like grinding and hard work with cute girls from other churches. And so you'd always International, have, yeah. New Zealand, Canadians, yeah. uh, Australians and mm-hmm. all. Oh, good day, mate. Uh, hello there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I didn't, I didn't oh, understand. I didn't realize I'd be chopping peaches next to you today. <laughs> Eight hours. Just yeah. Sl- labor. Yeah. Just hardcore labor. So, uh, and then like two days go by and you're just like in the line with all these people and you mm-hmm. get really close to them. Yeah. Yeah, and there's always like that one so fling. You always make one fling every single year I go. So like fun. some girl I'd work with yeah, every like, single but day. The fling is like, do you want to walk out on the peach? Yeah, farms? it's not like, oh, we're in high school, we have a fling. It's like, oh, I can't really so talk let me ask to you, you. Let me ask you this: uh, like, looking back mm-hmm. on like, how old were you? Like, cleaning times. Um, I went. I think the last time I went, I 12? was maybe like a sophomore in high school. Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all of it was not my choice to go. I mean, was it any of our choices? No. But we, it was. I'm not saying still it was amazing experiences. Oh, yeah. Like it, when you think of all the camps, like all the things we got to do with so many kids. Is that Obi? Yeah, Obi's fucking something up. Obi. Obi. Come here, Obi. You're fucking it up, dude. Yeah. You're you, gonna, you know what you've done. I think we should fire him, honestly. He just... Come on, let's go. He's supposed to be cooking. 
Get he, up. He's never made us <laughs> one snack. And Atmore is not managing shit. No. These cameras could shut off for all we know. Nope. Um, he's yeah. Like, he's like, I'm tired. We had a lot of uh, wonderful experiences just being able to go to camps and, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, missionary trips. I mean. But Gleanings, Gleanings was like the toughest and also the most fun. Things, but- yeah, I mean, I mean, when I think when I think back at it, it's because you would get all the churches together and you'd meet new friends. Being being that involved in the Christian faith as we were being raised, we didn't have many people outside of the faith that we knew. It was always church, church, church. We were homeschooled, so it was kind of like gleanings would be like I get to meet new people who are also Christian, which is good. That's always that's always what I thought is if I meet a girl, at least she's Christian. Mom will like her, you know. And so going to Gleanings was like, maybe I'll find my wife. Right. <laughs> you know, it was always about a wife. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll find my and wife. And that's, I think, yeah, that's, I mean, that has had huge consequences on our relationships. Yeah. Is that relationships. We is. saw a lot of older guys when we were younger meet girls at camps or mm. mission trips and then get Natalie married. And <laughs> Natalie and met our sister. Yeah. And now I'll they're probably, going I'll through. I'll probably bleep his name and, out. And, they're, and then Natalie, they're, they're going through a divorce. Right now, now they're going through a brutal yeah. divorce. But our sister and her we ex-husband, all know they met at Gleanings. That. But be careful what you say. <laughs> I'll probably bleep out anything that has to do with him. Uh, yeah. No, I just had a little, uh, 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 I am aware. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's ridiculous that it's not ridiculous. It's just when you realize you've been thinking about getting married or that day or who it's going to be since you're like eight, you're like, "Mm, Mm -hmm. should I be thinking about these things when I'm eight? Should I be thinking about my wife when I'm eight years old? Probably not. Maybe that's a little young. I started thinking about marriage around eight or six, somewhere around there. Like, I guess Evan, he doesn't think about that. I mean, maybe he does, but I feel Mm -hmm. like being in the, as much as like, the I mean, church, the church is all about when you're also, 17, you want to have sex, get married. Yeah. That's legit what it is. It, well, I mean, it pushes that. Yeah. That's what it pushes. And no one, no, no one that's high up in the faith would ever admit to that. They don't even realize that. How do you know it's going to fit? You got to try it out okay. before you get married, okay. bro. That's a great, great, great reason. I mean, you don't know if there's little skin flaps or thinking skin things flaps. poking out or like maybe yours gets a little veiny tough. around the right north side of the pole and you're just like... <laughs> Huh. It's a little loud. <laughs> Dude, that scream is the most cringe. That type of scream is so cringe. Dude, the scream the scream that Alex did when we were camping, I've <sighs> never heard her scream Dude, like that, that. No, honestly, it's like, it, it was, I was about to be like, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. I was like, babe, shut the yeah. fuck up. <laughs> Alex, what are you thinking right now? We're playing a video game with our net, my nephew and Nate's son, and you just, you didn't get the star you wanted, so you screamed a death scream. It was like, ah! it's like so Yeah, bad. she was like, ah! it was like, whoa. She was like really like gutty. Yeah, Gut yeah. is just like, yeah. Like, and she owned it too. We both looked at her and she was all, I know. If you got punched, <laughs> if you got punched, it'd be like, ah! yeah, it was one of those. Yeah. And it was immediately like, there's a fire. We are having a good time. And you're taking this very seriously right now. But I and love and appreciate you it for it. It was all for Mario Party. That was so good. That was great. We were all huddled in the cold playing on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. Mario Party with my son and uh, big old fire behind us. It was wonderful. He's finally at the age, man, where he's kicking our asses. And being, yeah, just ridiculously sarcastic yeah. about it, too. Well, it's, dude, I deserve it. I've just, been, I've been yeah, sarcastic you've been, you've been with him. Dick. Yeah, but now he's, <laughs> been finally, him the ways. Like, he's finally like, Uncle Zach, you think you're going to beat me? You're not. You're going to lose. You're going to lose real bad. You're not. You have no the, idea. No, the funniest and it's ones like, is oh when he's, he said, he's like, oh, no, another couple stars. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, oh. I guess I, I have like, nine stars Get up. I was like, get up. We're, uh, <laughs> don't do that and he's like oh no sorry another couple of stars i was like oh i taught you that one. Oh, it's so good the sarcasm that micro expression yeah. is so good he's like oh whoops Uh-oh. whoops i guess i won the minigame yeah. again. he's like oh i guess you guys could never be <laughs> anyways you want to play here i, I love it because i smash him in fortnite still so that's that give and take um so i know that i'm not editing the short looping back to where yeah. this all started and it's just I had a crazy work day uh, yesterday uh, as a nurse. Any day is possible. And so that has nothing to do with what editing is. But I just feel like there is a lot of my plate where I recognized that it's even hard for me to get started on editing the video. But all the stuff that I have sent you and all the stuff that I do and have been building is all on my phone. And I even 
pay for amazing like editing apps on the phone that are just like easy but, to use. So, but it might be easier for you just to do it on the phone then. Exactly. And so like all this footage that we got from camping, mm-hmm. like we got to make days in the life, like a camping like video because mm-hmm. we have such great footage for your birthday and oh, it no. was your fucking birthday. Hey, far. Hey, report. I the four. So I think I think it looks great. You could just sleep right there. Yeah. Fine. I obey. That's right. Nice. Why don't you sit? Sit. I'm gonna sit. Sit. Good boy. There you go. Get that shot. With <laughs> the flick of the wrist. Look at that. You're filming. Yeah. Now we have little tiny little things I had to use scissors to cut out. It took me like an hour to get all that. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? Beets and carrot things. It took me an hour with the scissors out there. And yes, I, I used bleach before I took the scissors out there so that I didn't transfer fungi or bacteria. Use bleach? I was actually just thinking the same thing. I was like, it's mine. Down there. That was close. Okay. Look, it's a floating leaf. <laughs> content. Ah. <laughs> you see a spot, an opportunity? And then uh, the most luckiest part of Uncle Zach's life. Just here to bear witness the reckoning of another age. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. I don't know if you can uh, see but in the distance here. It's like a wall, the whole wall caved in. You can see the roots from the trees under, growing from the side of the mountain. What does that even mean, you know? Bottom of roots. Even if you can't see it, it all matters, right? Um, I think we should Go back to our camp and then go down. Whoa, dude, I look awesome. Ooh, the bathroom's on. Like up the creek. He wants to go back to the bathrooms, but I'm hearing the bathroom. Come on, family. Follow me. No, yeah, if you guys are okay getting your, uh, if you guys are fine, like walking through, there's a beach right there. That's really nice. Dove commercial. That was beautiful, Zach. Well done, man. Well done. One, we're good, baby. Let's go. Right. You shoot. <laughs> Dudes. Quick. Killer. Actually, yeah, it's. Oh, jeez. <laughs> mm. 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 Yeah. 
Man, man, she been here. Give me, uh, I don't want black with a minimum. Mm. We can go black with a minimum. Mm. Ain't no black with a minimum. With a black with a minimum. Never work. So we gotta like make a little birthday video. You know, you're 30 years old. Birthday you're video. You're the last Blossom to turn. Th well, besides Evan, but you're th you're fucking 30. And look at that 30. hairline. Yeah, that's good. Y'all, can you zoom in? Zoom in on that hairline. Zoom in on the hairline. Zoom in. Look at that. Okay. And now look at mine. Look at mine. Look at mine. Yeah, it looks good, dude. You really put it on. <laughs> how, how does it look now? Better? You have a hat on. Did I fuck it up? Your hairline? Did I fuck up the hat? How, everything look, looks exactly the same. Perfect. I needed you to tell me that I looked okay. Yeah. Um, you pull off hats well. I have the round head. You got a little more oval head. My head's a perfect circle, man. Yeah, you got a nice little little oval head. It fits nice in that hat. I think it's because dad used to put your head on the carpet and just... No, that was you. That was you. <laughs> he used to be like, two round. No, dad, we're joking. You never did that. Our dad was very... Our dad was amazing. He uh, is... a. Ugh, there's so much praise that we can give uh, Father Chris Blostone on this podcast because he taught us basically all the sarcasm, like the, the, the stepping stones to how to be funny mm -hmm. and how to not take things too seriously and how to joke about most things was a great coping mechanism for life. <laughs> and so one of the jokes he would do is we were from like age six, seven, eight, he'd come up to us at any store or even at church. And he'd be like, you know, I told you not to, and he'd grab our faces right here. Which is <laughs> and he would just pretend to slap our faces and we would pretend to get hit. And he'd be like, don't ever do that. And we'd be like, Oh, and people all around would be got like, him in, <gasps> got him in trouble multiple times. Yeah. Like when it was I was hilarious. When I was 12, family. like Evan's age is when I learned, I was like, the next time he does a pretend slap, I'm going to not crack. I'm just going to pretend to be so hurt. And so we were in like Walmart and he, he did a pretend slap and which is hilarious that our father did this mm -hmm. type of shit. And I just was like, I know how to get back at him and it's going to be great. And I fell on the ground and I went, <gasps> And like he was like, okay, all right. And I just stayed on the ground. And I was like, oh. and there was like three ladies watching. Oh, it's just terrible. It was That's so good. Just and he terrible. was like, he was like, Nathan, come on, we're joking. We're joking. And I was like, he says we're joking every time. And he was god, like, you're such a terrible kid. He was just like, <laughs> he was like, oh my god, Nathan. And I was like, I got up. I went, we're kidding. I was like, gotcha, dude. And he was like, we're and that was it. He never did another one again. And he's, he's probably doing his nervous laugh. I was just, dude, I beat him. I was yeah. like, and he never did another fake slap. Then I started just slapping you for real. Yeah. Yeah. You remember what dad said? Bam! Yeah. And it was funny because I it knew it was part of the joke. It was abuse. It was just pure abuse, dog. You would hit me. You would hit me with full, full force. <laughs> Not full force. Bro. In front of Jordan, Jordan, the number there. I, you, I, it was all about dude, getting I that I remember laugh. because I feel like this is trauma, you know, like <laughs> yeah. I literally would like, you know. And you'd be, but you'd act it and you'd play it. No, you would hit me, doc. <laughs> I wasn't acting. I would just smile so that everyone didn't oh, know man, it was I'm awkward. Red. That's hilarious. We were, we were young. It was only about What about year. the time you threw that, that, uh, dude, I was that boat at my face that in, the, in the bathtub. Was, Our boats. There was one time. And you looked at me and you had dude, that you death didn't, stare. You didn't want to play the boat game. I wanted to play the boat game so bad. And I was like, let's play the boat game. And you're like, no. And I was like, I want to play the boat game. And you're like, no. And so I grabbed the boat, looked at you, felt this rage. Oh, I, I felt saw it. it in your eyes. And I was just like, fuck your face. <laughs> as hard as I could. And it hit. Dude, it was all. And you're all. Ah! And you started just freaking out. And I tried to calm you down. I was like, Nate, shut up. Nate, stop. Nate. Man, I, I, I remember that so... It's crazy. I, did, I have that such a vivid memory. The boat exploded. Mm -hmm. It went into pieces. And mm -hmm. I remember it didn't hurt at all. It hit me perfectly here, exploded. And it didn't hurt. But the fact that the boat exploded... Yeah. And it was such a dramatic sound and yeah. experience. Because you looked at me, you went... <clears throat> and you kept looking at me. And I was just so scared that you were turning into like this demon. And I was just like... Ah! It, it, you totally won. You made me cry a lot. Yeah, you, know, you made until me cry until you got into middle school. You were kind of like the little like little baby until was, middle school, and then you became a bitch. you became cat. Yeah, there you go. Scary you became you became something else after middle school. <laughs> what does that mean? I was president of the Christian club seventh and eighth grade. Just you saying. heard it, president of the Christian club in but, middle school. And we all know Christians are good people. Ugh, I was a good kid. I was so <laughs> I was so special. No, we were all special in our own way. Except for Natalie, she wasn't that special. Natalie was she the most dunk. famous 
person. I don't know and how, dude. Those school. vinegar feet, man. You know, Natalie would, uh, uh, and Natalie, we love you. And so this is well, this one's for you. Yeah. And uh, she would wear a shirt in high school that had Velcro yep. here, and she'd had every letter of the alphabet, and she'd change and, it every and she day. She would Velcro different things, like uh, I, I, I love snails. Mm-hmm. She was a weird girl, like Happy Monday. <laughs> and then she would wear Avril Lavigne, like you know those like arm sleeves that would like you wear them through your hair, and they'd stop up here. Mm-hmm. She'd wear like Avril Lavigne arm sleeves uh, when we when she moved out and got married, and we finally got into the room that we called the pigsty. Um, we took out her bed and she had uh, grass growing in the carpet <laughs> under her bed. Grass in a field of ants. The whole carpet was all... It was, oh, it was like... It was horrendous. I think of me as a parent and I walk in and I smell like anything in Evan's room and I'm like, get up, get up. What did you do? You know what? Looking back at it now, I I think having a sister is really good for future living with a woman. Oh, you think? Yeah, duh. Because Especially an older sister. if I didn't sister. have a sister, I would think most women are ridiculously clean and don't smell really ever. Which this is not like, a, it's, I think that humans just are, I don't think it's. Exactly. Right. Exactly. We, there Perspective was, wise. We, yeah, we had a very, we, yeah, we always talked about this too. Like we had such a strong awareness of just women <laughs> yeah. and, and, and how women like periods were never questioned uh, like womenly stuff was just always known. And, but still, man, I suffered from like severe, like churchy, you know, put women on a pedestal. They can do no wrong, glor- like glorify. And like, instead of like seeing people as an individual, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's like, which is a completely different, two different uh, perspectives. I know this little cutie, but just the way he's like double hand clawing on you and just like, I'm putting my head here. Yep. He's owning it. So, yeah, you you got some topics this time. I do, and so that was a pretty good intro. That was and, great. Uh, yeah, that was, was good. great talking to you. But um, good. we actually don't have any more time, so it's that. So, I actually printed out because uh, it would be really nice to have a phone or a computer. And I think one of the things about our podcast that I love that because I watch a lot, which I'm not really watching any more podcasts that much. Um, I don't watch podcasts. I listen to some. I mean, I watch them. That's because I love. Can't. I do love the video, but I'm like, I, most time, I'm, times I'm listening, to, I'm like in the car uh, or like I'm in my headphones cleaning or something. I just want to say something right now. Can I just say something right now? Dude, go ahead and say it. I'm like mm, mm. so madly in love with Andrew Santino. Oh, I know. I love him to death. Um, and I love watching him mm. talk because mm. he's like acting and talking. Mm-hmm. I, I want to, and I'm not trying to be like fanboy here. A little fanboy. I think the reason why I really like the way he is because he th- he's just so good at being authentic. Mm-hmm. Everything he says and sit the way he like holds himself is really authentic. And so I really I've learned that I've tried to figure out like doing this now with you like who are the people I really like. That's one of the things that yeah. I just now I've like yeah and or who I look up to or like see as being. And I've looked at some of Bad Friends first episodes and then I've looked at Andrew Santino from the past. And like everybody starts from somewhere. Yeah. And all of these guys were just. Yeah, such, they've gotten a lot better. They've been doing they it for started. so long. Yeah. But Andrew Santino seeing him live and like, so I, uh, I, uh, I don't even know. Why was I saying that though? I wanted just to say that. Mm. And um, we're big, big Bad Friends fans. I think yeah, a lot of people are my number for good one reason. podcast. Um, also, the Schultz, Alex Schultz is a brilliant fucking genius. And I'm just going to say I'm a big fan of Impulsive. But I'm not watching any of these things anymore mm. since we really started ours, which I love because I would much rather be thinking about what we can creatively be and do. And like, so I, I mean, I still watch some of them. I just don't watch all the podcasts like I used to. Mm. Like I feel like something I'm noticing time. is I watch podcasts based off guests. So it's like I have my podcast that I like because I like their podcast. But if they have a good guest, I'm definitely watching it. And I've noticed that I skip episodes if I don't really connect with the guest. Come to me, but my jungle every friends. single episode, most of the time, most podcasts I watch, they have guests. And it's kind of an interesting dynamic that we're going into the podcast game, not necessarily having guests or thinking about it. Like we, yeah, we, we, we to, are going to have guests. Hopefully they just want to watch us. Exactly. Which is kind of an interesting thing to go. Do you want to watch us? Yeah, let's watch those boys. Do you want to watch us do this talk? Learn how to build structure? Run a podcast called Those Boys, a business, an LLC with merch. Would you buy merch? Maybe a sandal, a flippy, a floppy, maybe an iPhone cover, a case, maybe a slouch. <laughs> <or> a... 
<laughs> Man, you were going. I loved it. <laughs> Would you buy merch? A case? A slouch? A pouch? A pooch? Anything you want for those boys? Please you? comment in the comments below. <laughs> so, first topic. We had an earthquake. Holy fuck. How have we not talked about And living in California, yet? everyone that doesn't live in California, they're like, why would you live on the, the faults? And you're like, why would you live in hurricane or like... Or tornado. Tornadoes or like... We have fires and earthquakes here now. And it's like, yeah, yeah why would you want to live here? This is yeah. crazy. <laughs> well, the fires, yeah, yeah. Why would you want to live here? There's yeah, everything's be, burning. Like, if it's not, if but it's we not don't being, really get earthquakes that much. But this last earthquake. Well, there's a lot like happening all over the world, it feels like. And we're always told like every hundred years you get yeah. the big one. But it was a 4.4. What was, uh, where were you? What were you doing? I was at work when it first hit. Um, and at my work is a place you shouldn't have earthquakes. <laughs> you know, it's why? too fancy. Oh, Thing. Uh, yeah, I have oh, to blow it. Sorry, I have to just bleep it. it. It's fine. It's, it's, I'll bleep it. Yeah, who even cares? Um, well, just I can't. I can't talk about it. I've, I've signed documents that I can't talk about it. That's fine. Then just but, beep it. Yeah, I'm going to. And everyone that's watching it, you can just be like, "Yeah, we're beeping it," but we know that you're fucking watching it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, Which, um, I was bartending, and the glassware just all started like kind of vibrating and moving back and forth, and I was like, "Wow, they must be dropping a big trash load downstairs." That's my thought. Because <laughs> really? we, we have big oh. trash c- cards. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> And they'll dump something and like sometimes you'll feel a little rumble. It's like, oh, okay, they did something. But this is like, and I was like, I think it's an earthquake. So I run outside because I just want to let my server know who's out there. I was like, hey, 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 earthquake, 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 earthquake. Yeah, I was like, earthquake, earthquake, earthquake. And she was like, what, what? And then it was done. That was it. And we didn't even get the aftershock. How did you do it again? Earthquake, 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 earthquake. That's the reaction, right? Because like the feeling's like, is it real? Yeah. Well, because you'll, you'll, it's real, 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 it's real. <laughs> exactly. Then it's done. By the time it's done. So it's like, that was it. You remember, remember, remember when that happened? It's all it was. So it was nothing. But then when I got home, boy, was my house in fucking ruins. That's what you said. Yeah. Yeah. Everything had fallen shit over. Shit actually broke. So much shit broke. Our, uh, our shower, I thought Alex accidentally like cleaned it too hard or something and broke it. Nope. It was the earthquake that like the slider doors are on this little plastic thing. It shook so hard. It shattered the plastic. No. Thing off. Yeah. That's so, crazy. so much shit broke, dude. And not, not many people at work said shit broke. We had some things that fell when I got home or when I came in the house, I didn't even notice certain things, but like the picture of the sacred heart of Jesus that's mm. in the bathroom yeah. with the golden frame. Yeah. Uh, is all crooked now mm. and i was like taking a shit like a couple days after the earthquake and i was like ptsd <laughs> oh my, God. Dude, my experience was crazy i like yeah. I, I had a scary i was all by myself and i was sitting right out here in the driveway yeah and so i like my and nobody else seemed to have had besides my co- one of my coworkers. she lives like closer downtown and where the earthquake hit was right behind the hills of uh, fountain grove yeah yeah, yeah. And so, like, that just ran right through downtown, I guess, and just hit all this area really hard. And I was sitting in my car listening to, oh, I want to shout him out so bad because I love his his videos. Um, but I'm not going to be able to remember his name right now. I got to, you know, but uh, I was watching this one guy who uh, makes these videos on YouTube. He makes these videos on, like, actors. He does these deep dives. I remember you talking about him, yeah. He does these deep dives, and he always tells people to, like, drink water before you, you know. Remember to drink water. And I always like that because it's just like, oh, that's right. I got to drink some water when I'm watching this. And uh, so I was listening to his podcast. I was like really in on it. And it was one about Bam Majera. Majera. So he and has a like, podcast too or is it just YouTube? Well, it's his YouTube videos. I, I call everything a podcast now, but he sits like this in front of his computer and then gotcha. like does these crazy video deep dives and like talks and they're really well done. Um, but he's been doing this deep dive on Bam Majera, Majera. And I was listening to that. That's a huge intro of like how deep I was like lit watching my phone, you know, like on the magnet holder and my gr- house like does this turn where so I can see the roof of my house and there's a tree here and there's like my trash cans and I'm sitting in the car and the car is still on. And so I'm just looking there and all of a sudden it's just like, and it's like very loud. And all of a sudden, like the skyline stays, everything's like this, but the house just, everything just goes. And like, I'm listening, but I don't hear anything. So I'm just like, <laughs> and like, cause it was like that. Yeah. You once you start the to process vision, it. Yeah. Cause when an earthquake happens, everything rolls. Well, you start, you start to feel like you're on water. Every single yeah. thing rolls. So yeah. every, and everything moves beautifully. Cause the whole earth just goes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So you're like, 
it's so weird feeling. So immediately I'm like, uh, uh, and I like hit this. I turn off the car and it's all, uh, and I'm in the car. I'm like, uh, I had this total moment where I was like, no. And like everything outside is all, and the fence is all, and I was like, oh, please stop. And yeah, it's it terrifying. And I'm like, just like that. Yeah. That's how fast and that's how it felt. And I was I was like upset with myself with how scared I was. Because I immediately was like. <laughs> and I got like really excited. Because I was like, oh, that's right. I've always told myself when the big earthquake comes, there's nothing anybody can do. Nope. It is the scariest thing because everything moves. You can't move. Yeah. So wherever you are when an earthquake happens, you just it's, ho- you, hope the earth doesn't <laughs> crack there. Yeah. Well, it's get under, get under something. Maybe. No, like outside supposedly is the safest because nothing can fall mm, on you. So yeah. They, they say not. No. no, that's exactly right. If like, you can get to a grassy field. No, yeah. like if you're in, like if you're like where I was outside, I was just standing in my driveway. So anything that would have fallen would be like the house would have like fallen by me and I would have ran by or whatever. But like, uh, so I, but I was thinking like, oh, the, I, the big one's going to be like a 20 minute shake. So no, I'm, I don't think it'd be 20 minutes. I, it's just going to be like a 9.0. And so it's going to be like, <laughs> everything's just going to come down. Oh dude. God. It's going to be anyway, terrible. So like it's a 4.4, <laughs> which isn't that big, whatever that means. But I remember thinking like, that's the, that's the, what surprised I'm me, the character. Man. I'm like, my, I have an earthquake character mm. and it's like. Earthquake! Earthquake! <laughs> hey, hey! Neighbors! We got an earthquake! Yeah, like, I get exactly. into the earthquake guy. So I, like, immediately went to our tenant, and I was just like, Earthquake! Earthquake! <laughs> and, like, I was like, we're going to get the aftershock! And I just yelled that. There's going to be an aftershock! <laughs> and I was like, who am I yelling to? It's because you're alone in it, dude. Dude, I was so alone and outside. Yeah. And I grabbed the fence. Or no, no, I don't grab the fence. And I was just like, there's going to be an aftershock! Not talking to anybody. It's like, okay, Nathan, you're in character, and it's all boom. <laughs> oh, oh, I grab the fence. I'm like, ah, oh, woo! That was good. And like, no one's outside. Yeah. All of a sudden, I hear <laughs> and the kids skateboarding, like down the street, and I'm like. Oh, it's a weird, weird world. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Like that was crazy. Oh, well, if you're skating, so that's the thing, man, is if you're moving and there's only a 4.9 earthquake or something, it's like, yeah, if you're standing still and you're in like the part that's going to be like right. shaking, then you'll feel it. But if you're moving, like I had a couple friends that were driving on the freeway when it happened and they were like, I thought there was an earthquake, but I couldn't really tell. And it's like, yeah, you're moving. You're not going to tell. It's like, if you're standing still and the world God. starts shaking, you notice it. It was nuts, man. And I... We uh, haven't had we haven't had that one that big in a minute though. So like thing. things at the hospital <coughs> fell over, and, and I guess because on the third floor of the hospital, I heard it was like <laughs> patients Dude, in yeah, bed. No, so, <laughs> so <laughs> your hospital's right by my house, so I can only imagine. Dude, I w- I got home and everything was on the floor. Yeah, all like the Evans big frame had fallen and shattered all over the floor. The remember the jewelry container we made with him. Uh, but way back in the day, oh, yeah, that fell and broke. Of course, everything. Uh, what does so that mean? Much, I know so much fell and broke that I was like, "What earthquake was this here?" Because yeah. I was, I was at work. Like, oh, there's a little little just, earthquake. Yeah, just because it's not that big to you doesn't mean it's not like something else to somebody else. Boom! I guess that's a classic saying. Well, it's just very much on where the earthquake happened. It happened on Fountain and Grove. I was talking to an anesthesiologist, and she said that I was like, "Yeah, I was like, I was in my my driveway," and she was like, "You were in your driveway. I was in surgery." And I was like, oh my God, like, you know what? We don't have to be, <laughs> we have to be, I was like, I was like, we don't have to be like, and she's like, no, that's what I'm saying. I, I just I had to hold the patient. I was like, you know, what? we're good. <laughs> okay. I was in the car listening to a podcast. <laughs> you were in surgery. And I like left. I was like, whatever. Good, good talk, doc. <laughs> yeah. I was in surgery. I had to keep the patient alive the whole time. All right. So where are we at? How much time? Yeah, about two minutes. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're coming up on... I started it, I think, about eight minutes in. Okay. And so we're coming up on about 40 minutes. That's good. All right. Yeah, about 20 more. We can get through some of this. So I have a story I really want to say, like share, just because the experience was hilarious. Um, but I also don't think it's that big of a deal. But um, so Joe Rogan uh, had a guest on and... I have not been keeping up with Joe Rogan's podcast. He every yeah. single freaking day he puts these multiple hour episodes out. 
And there was a time when he was like one of the main and only podcasters that I was mm-hmm. listening to. And so I was listening was, before the Spotify deal. That's he, what it was. He just, well, he just had a lot of a control over the industry or just like the viewership of like me and like what I thought of podcasting and like got into. But um, he had this scientist on recently that like was pretty amazing. His name was Dr. Gaber Mate. And uh, he had this theory that I wanted to ask you and what you mm. thought. And it's, there's so much that was said. So I'm just picking pieces out of things to talk about. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you and I both have been diagnosed with ADHD. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I, I know what doctor you're talking about now. And, um, you know, Joe Rogan has ADHD or ADD, like a psychologist, a psychiatrist on. He always asks about ADHD. And Joe Rogan has a lot of opinions on it. You and I have had our fair share of medication and experience with ADHD and uh, smoke plenty of weed. And mm-hmm. we know that that like facilitates dissociation a lot and which makes ADHD a lot worse at times, but also can really help keep you focused mm-hmm. on other things. So his theory was that he was like, Joe Rogan was like, you know, what is ADHD? Can you explain it? Like, is it real? And his, he was just like, ADHD is not real. This is not a real thing. Mm. And it was like immediately like a different take on ADHD and his, I'm just going to paraphrase here and make it really a really stupid approach to like trying to say what he said, said and see what you think is just that instead of AD, thinking of ADHD as being this condition that you're diagnosed with, it's because of everything he says is like really a outcome, a culprit of where you come from, which is the upbringing of your parents or the way your parents up like brought you up, meaning like how your parents literally were in front of you and what was imprinted on your brain as like a baby to a toddler into a child, like what mm. you saw and heard and smelled and like felt everything was like attached to that imprinting, if you will. This is how I took it. And so, uh, you know, when anybody's under a lot of stress, you know, how they handle that stress is different. And so the way that you're raised or like all of the uh, trauma that maybe happens in your life as a kid or what you see like fighting from parents or what you, whatever it might be as a kid, the way a kid handles that is by disassociating from it because there's mm. nothing they can do. That disassociation follows you throughout your entire life. So ADHD isn't necessarily just pure, a condition. It's just pure dissociation. It's just a, it's just a dis- because you could say everybody has, everybody could say they have ADHD of some form or another, meaning like under stress, they don't, they disassociate a little bit, which means you're like not focusing on this or that. And so he was saying that ADC isn't like necessarily a condition. It's like an outcome of like your childhood, like the Mm. way, and so you have to go back to like a lot of what we talk about is like, and I don't know. And so I don't know if I even said that. Well, it sucks that we can't search it up more right now, but um, no, and and I've seen the clip. What do you think about that though? That Um, take on it? I think it's an interesting take. I don't fully agree with it. Um, I think it, it, it's, I think all of our disabilities mentally come from your DNA, how you were raised, like a combination of everything. Like not just one thing. It's not just like, I, I have ADHD because I taught myself how to disassociate as a kid. It's like, that could be definitely part of it for sure. But I also just have like an issue or not even an issue. It's just like my level of focus is different. And my motivation is different, but there's a lot of people like us um, in the world. And so I also think that the advancement of technology has a lot to do with ADHD. You think, so you think like social media and technology have an effect on like attention spans? <clears throat> I just look at where we've come from and we were, when we were raised, man, I remember when the internet came out. So it's kind of like, that's a pretty wild thing to think about. I remember dial up and uh, uh, I don't necessarily remember a world without internet, but I do. Yeah. And we would play that little, uh, we, yeah, I was go to the gaming sites and stuff, whatever. But, um, and then you click a website. Well, no, it was, you have to enter the website name perfectly. There was no Google. Yeah. And you would, it would take about 30 minutes to upload the website. Hear- come on, come on, come on. Kilobytes a second. Ah, tits. Tits. <laughs> nah, dude. No, nah, it was lingerie on eBay. Yeah. Yeah, because dad had, dad had Covenant Eyes. Dad had Covenant Eyes. All the computers. Covenant Eyes was a, a magnificent thing that if you ever went to a website that we was... sponsored by Covenant Eyes? That, that would be so funny. Some guys, this episode funny. is brought to you by Covenant Eyes. <laughs> but if you went to a, a bad website, it would email... Well, Flag. It, 
every single week, it'll, it'll send all the sites that were visited on the internet, your internet service to an email, but then it'll show you all the red ones, the flag ones. And so if you visited a porn site or a gaming site that had porn games or something on it, high red, and then your dad gets gets to go to the site and see who visited, but they wouldn't know who did it. He might even get an email that day if it's red enough. Yeah, I know. If it's bad enough, he'll he'll come into your room that minute and be like, what are you looking at right now? So you were on um, (laughs) pussyfightsxxx.com. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Every time. Dad, that sounds ridiculous. It's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, definitely not. So you were on uh, cockrings101.com? <laughs> that was no. Zach. No. That was Zach. That wasn't me. No, we. it was. Uh, that but was what were we talking about? ADHD? Yeah. That's exactly a good point. ADHD. Yeah. <laughs> That's us, baby. So something that our listeners that actually have told me, some of the reviews I've gotten is that you guys don't finish topics. And I'm like, we have pretty bad ADHD. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, you're, exactly. you're, gonna, you're either going to get on board or you're not. Yeah. But I think we're going to finish topics because we are we don't really have, we're just like improv Yeah. But this is a kind of guided No, topic. for sure. For sure. So you think, it, I like that. I like that it, your simple response was like, it's never just one thing. I don't think it ever could be. I don't think any disorder could ever be one I totally agree with you. It's like, unless it's something so extreme that you have PTSD and you're shutting off, then it's like, it might be one thing. But wouldn't you say like all of us suffer from PTSD of the trauma of our past? For sure. But it's probably a concoction of trauma. It's probably not just one thing. Sometimes it can be if it's really severe PTSD trauma. But most time it's, oh, my dad had this emotional issue that I had to deal with as a kid growing up. Therefore, I developed these issues. But we don't have father issues. We don't have father. We don't deal with father. I have no issues. I don't have daddy issues. I have no daddy issues. Or mommy issues. <laughs> like, cut. Never. Cut, like, short. Yeah. That's a short. Yeah. I don't have daddy issues. Short. Short. Just that. Yeah. Two seconds. I do not have daddy issues. <laughs> you try that. You try looking into the camera. And saying that. Come on. Okay, I'm getting in my Zen palace. You, I quick. told you we need to be practicing how to look into cameras and do it. I don't have daddy issues. Okay, go a lot slower. Because you want it to be tough. Yes. Yeah. I want to get through it's it and hard go on. to say it. Well, it's just, I don't want to, I can smile. I can look pretty. Hey, go. hey you. Hey, look at me. Look at me. There you look go. at me. Fall in love with that yeah. eye. Yeah. That's a beautiful, that's three eyes. Don't, no, don't look away. I know it's awkward. Don't look away. I, me, I'm talking about myself. Me, Zach Blostone. No. Okay, cut. Hold uh, on. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> I need you to stop. You're filling the void now because you don't want to laugh. So you're using commentary to get in the way. I need you to just say the words and say them spacey. Like, like Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Please do not take that personally. I do not. <laughs> <laughs> well played. It's tough, man. It's because we do. But we love our fathers so much. And that but, video you just sent of a, uh, uh, that video you just sent me, that TikTok of um, the comedian. <laughs> the only reason why I can't think of names because we're on camera. Yeah. And I feel like my my memory for some reason. Comedian. I sent you a video of a comedian. Uh, what's up? Gang Gang. Gang Gang. What's his name? He's got the mullet. Oh, Theo Vaughn. You sent me that video of Theo Vaughn because his, you know, his dad Well, he died. was, he, Theo Vaughn, he has his own podcast. Yeah, like yeah. A soul, he just sits in front of a camera by himself. I know. And he'll just talk. I and feel it's like, like I, I love that. I love that too. I love it. And uh, he'll get real, real fucking real. Yeah. And there's a couple of clips where he'll be like tearing up like that, talking about his past and how he's obviously learning shit in therapy and like growing so much. And it's just like, damn, dude, that's real vulnerability and that's content. Yeah. Well, because I mean, it's, it's so true. Because a lot of people experience that and they connect with that. And I think that that's what entertainment is, is connecting with like, you. Oh, me too, I lost my dad. Yeah. My, 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 my father. Yeah. Our father is not our father. Anyways. So, New York sues Trump. I saw this ad today. I didn't read into it. Tell me about it. AOC had maybe something to do with it. Who Fuck really knows? Yeah. Fuck AOC, yeah. 2024. AOC, 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 AOC,
I want that AOC on this. Ah, I want that AOC on that game. Play with the friends and then play with the tangs. She can do anything she wants on this. Woo! AOC. Mm. AOC. A. AOC. 2024. I'm in the AOC. A. 20. Yeah. Dude, that, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> More's like, that's I a can great wiggle. idea. It's not a bad idea. We should drop. Those boys are going to drop an AOC. Straight chart. up, though, dude, if she runs 2024, I'm going to become so political. I'd well, need her to win. Well, we have a platform we're starting now in Hell 2022. Yes. Also, I'm buying crypto again for 2024. Let's go. Let's go. It's going to be bull run very soon in 2024. 2024. Only a year of sadness. So Let's go. it was a civil suit alleges Trump a fraud over a span of 10 years with over 200 instances found. Yep. Um, I know there's been so much Trump, but honestly, it's just amazing content when you want to bring it's up just Trump. the best. As, he's, as he starts to fall. I'm just, I'm honestly let's just, just Let's just all clap. You for gotta be fall. honest. You gotta be honest. It's really exciting. It's very exciting to watch Trump fall. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing for our nation to see. Uh, anyway, so that was amazing. Anything to say about that? Uh, dude, I just, I want him to lose everything. I just feel like we never talk about politics. We also didn't talk about it, how his wife is dead. Do you know how she died? No. She fell down a flight of stairs in their house. What? Right after she was going to testify dude, against him. Wait, you, Milani? You didn't hear anything Melanie? I just said. Yes. Mal- I, if I, dude, I wish we did have a computer so we no, could look Milani, it up. No, Mal- Milani's if I not remember, dead. Yes. No, she's not. So then who died? His first wife. The one he left for a hotter, younger international wife. But she was just about to testify against him the next day and somehow fell down some stairs. She putined him, as I like to say. So I like, uh, blah, blah, blah. He putined her? He putined her. She putined him. Where it's like, oh, you come against me? You putined me. What's up, I putined you. Um, also, Putin's on the rain again. Fucking just killing people. Putin's on the rain again, just killing people, and it's... Throwing them out of windows. All, all, all jokes aside... What is this whole like mobilization thing about Putin's mobilizing Russia? What does that mean? I know. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) I I wish we did know more about like the atrocities that are happening around the world. I just can't believe they're still trying to win this war. Do you believe all of the news that you see though? Yes. Fake news sometimes. Dude, uh, when we were driving uh, back from Chico or wherever we were, Red Bluff, uh, one of the church's um, slogans, Capitol. one of the uh, church's slogans was, we preach real news, not fake news. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of, I think, like, that's like what everyone's preaching. Like, uh, CNN is a new thing is like, back to the facts. Okay, so then. Uh, <laughs> so then what was it before? Was it not You've facts? been giving us not facts? <laughs> Liars! <laughs> You've been giving us not facts this whole time. Um, Anyways, let's move on from Trump because I got mother shit and I know that we're keeping this at an hour. Oh, yeah. So today. okay, and I know that this is going to be aired not today. This will be two weeks from now, which is or a week from now or whatever it's going to be, which is it's what every podcast is. I know. But like right now, women in Iran are like removing their hijabs, screaming death to dictator in a protest against the assassination of a woman called Mahmasa Amini. Because of not putting her hijab on correctly. So there's like like protests right now in Fuck Iran happening yeah, in ways dude. that are like like cars upside down. Women are in the streets. Really? How have I not seen anything about this? I, I would imagine there's reasons why, but it's all over. And I and I needed to like bring that up. Yeah, because, that's amazing. Um, that's just like some really crazy shit, man. That's so amazing. So it's like the one of the things that's like... Being in California right now and like all of the news Iran, like it's just so sad. It's t- yeah, you know, like sad. it's just ins- it's it's hard. If I'm being 100 percent real, hard to like understand that level of life. Like, what would it be like to be a woman in Iran? And like, I don't know. Like, imagine being that woman, and like you put on your hijab incorrectly because you're making like you want. And they killed her. And they yeah. Yeah, me. yeah. Fuck that country, dude. Straight up. So, I, like, no, I, it's not fuck that. No, country. dude. Straight that country, fuck right? that country. But no, no. Maybe the people, the maybe that the men, it. maybe the toxic, the dictators that run the, it, the, the religion that runs it too. But I mean, like, women right now, the same women of that country are protesting, holding their country accountable, like holding the people accountable. So I mean, like, when you say I fuck that country, what about all the women and the people that live there I'm right saying, now? I'm saying fuck that country for what it is. I'm I mean, not saying for what it can't become. Fuck religion. Yeah, hundred percent. Fuck, fuck, fuck religion. Fuck, fuck uh, not just not fuck not fuck all religion. I mean, like fuck 
toxic what's it called um extreme religion extremism yeah. you know i yeah. mean religion of all type is fucked but like dude West- any any religion that takes a woman and says you can't do this you have to be this men rule everything there's a problem with that fucking religion oh yeah and and that's most religions most besides, religions like, are male ran besides eastern religion but most most text of all history is sexist and so when you really zoom out and you look at racism and sexism and everything else it's un it's unreal how different of a life we have lived mm. on it. all fucking levels oh 100 percent, man you know then uh, and like so like and like being reminded of that and learning that like in a partnership with our you know like is one thing and then like really thinking about other countries and then this is it's as out it's astounding it's astounding mm. it's like it's shocking but not at all and i don't want it to be de- i don't want to like desensitize to other things going on in the world i think other news outside of our country is so important cuz like america is not the focus it's a gucci belt yeah what, what is that like saying but there's things changing here too it's oh no it's we're not we're I'm, not the not, same we're not the same amount of privilege we were 50 years ago you know what i mean like 20 years ago it, no, ever since the housing really crash me. of t- 2008 everything's changed in america and then now after the pandemic it's just getting so much worse and so we're starting to become a little more equal mm. but nothing like iran not, or like n- nothing like not, these places that this whole time as a woman you couldn't show your your skin you couldn't you never could and you still can't it's like i can't i can't even imagine what it's like to be raised in that society as a male or even as a female, it's like, like, what the hell? How could you ever stand by and think this is good if there's places in the world that aren't doing this, you know? I mean, there's, I think there's a lot of th- things we could say about how and why or how extremism happens and how. But there's so many countries, there's so many countries that are extremist control. countries. Russia being one of them, China being another one of them, Iran being one of them. I mean, Sweden, is it North Sweden's, Korea? Sweden's had a complete like reinvigoration of their white supremacist nazism it's bizarre i think mm. it's sweden i don't want to like just sh- fuck you sweden like, say <laughs> that it's like but it's it's true like there's you know like insane white supremacist uprisings in other countries and even i mean i mean trump I, trump had a huge white supremacist uprising in our country too and it just there's always been the white supremacist uprising but that you could say that for every country is certain dictators can bring it out it's like hitler brought out but, the I mean, nazism as it's well it's always there it's just not on like the level of internet now it's like i mean did you know that from like 1960 to 1964 there were like over some ridiculous like 100 maybe 60 to 100 somewhere in there Literal terrorist bombings that went that happened in Mississippi from white supremacists on sc- black schools, schools of color, churches. 1964, you said? From 1961, like 66, 61 to 1964, like over 100 bombings. Mm. We're talking ex- bombing churches, schools, preschools, houses. Mm. Did you ever know that? No. Nope. White supremacy in 1960s blowing up, like full on just exploding. And that's just like one pinprick of the history of like shit that I never knew about because I'm reading John Lewis's memoir and like knowing about what's going on in the world is so important. But yeah, I'm reading a book right now on the real history that it's just like history is so important, man. Oh, it's so it's so and there's so much daunting. there's so much history that is blinded from children. I, I remember is, when I took my is. my first history class in college. Um, yeah, you were like, and it was when I was like 26, dude. It was way late. <laughs> no, I was That's what that's what history class is like. You're like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it blew me away at how much uh was uh not taught to me in high school about slavery and about I, uh the truth of of white. Yeah, I think my joke there was being like it's so amazing. It's so overwhelming. It's so overwhelming like I that was one of the greatest classes I ever I could totally Same. be into his, like learning a lot about history, but it's yeah, it's history was wild in college. That was when I had that moment too, where I was like, "No way!" Yeah, and this that's still still just an, I I, like I, it's still a U.S. Yeah. history course. You know, it's not like I didn't have like this disgust of white males until history 
until I learned history. And then you learn that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, white males have been very disrespectful and rude. Thousands. <laughs> and hurt a lot of fucking people for their own gain. That it's like, how could you not? It's a, um, it's a, a systemic infection. It's a disease. I do think, though, that the pain that we're about to all go through in our society is going to be ridding a pretty big poison that has been waiting to be ridded. And what do you mean? Gonna, pain from what? The, dude, at some point we got a 9.0? <laughs> no, no. At some point, the elite class is going to have to lose a little bit. I know. You keep thinking about this revolution. Bro, what else are we going to do? Podcast. Well, we're going to podcast for sure. So shout out. And so much love and respect to the women of Iran and also to the family and the insanity that's going on around Masa Amini. Big shit. Mm. Um, this is nuts. Uh, so PlayStation is coming out with their new VR. It's called PS, PSVR 2. And they just dropped a new trailer for their virtual reality. And Odessa mm. is the track. Oh, Odessa, the artist. The, the, the two guy. Yeah. The two dude, DJ, live DJ group. And uh, I, I was just like, I, I was like really stoked for them. I was like, that's a phenomenal. All right. And also the idea that a uh, gig Sony is going VR. It used PlayStation to be VR. Since, sounds like that's probably going to be pretty amazing. I would I'd the hope metaverse, so. metaverse, baby. I'd hope so. Because as of right now, it's just Facebook that's putting out some good VR stuff. And then like some other off-brands, but like people that have the real power I don't know money. any other off-brand besides Oculus. Oculus is, is Facebook. I know. That's all I know. Well, there's other ones that are way more expensive that are like the oh, amazing. PC brand stuff. Um, but no, it's just like big. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I don't want to wear that. And yeah, probably higher quality and works better, but I don't want that. But then now Facebook's new VR just got leaked. I don't know if you've seen the pictures of that. Like their new Oculus headset. It looks pretty cool. It looks like big glasses. But that's mm. all it is. It's like instead of putting on a headset. You Whose is this? This is the new Facebook one that's coming oh. out. Uh, someone went to a hotel and opened up one of the drawers and one of the prototypes happened to be in there. And they took pictures of it and sent it on the internet. Think if think if you like went into a, like I think it's bullshit, but think if you went into a hotel. It's a great ad. That's like, oh no, I found this oh, new <laughs> version it's in planted. my hotel room. Post, post, post. Yeah, it's planted, dude. Do you like the flash I used on it? But what's it's interesting to hear that I didn't know that Sony was or PlayStation was coming out with a VR set because the idea that we all have to for gaming in the metaverse to use an Oculus is like, well, Oculus is probably gonna be really good for like social stuff. Where it's like you put it on, whatever. Because it's Facebook. Yeah, it's Facebook. So it's it's trying to be as as hip and social as possible. But when it comes to gaming, where it's like, no, I want like 4K, 240 frames a second in VR, perfect response, like tw like two grand to buy it. It's like a computer on your face. Like you want one of those for gaming. It's like PlayStation is going to be the one to offer that yeah. for sure. And then Xbox Maybe, we'll will come see. out with theirs. Yeah, Microsoft is interesting. Like I don't even, I'm, I mean, Microsoft is PC and so much shit. And so I imagine they have a lot of, I mean, a lot of these companies too is they buy everything. You know, it's like, oh, you have the newest, awesomest technology because one person developed this technology, you know, like figured it out and that startup has got it. And then Apple or somebody comes in and is like, yeah, we'll take it for uh, 200 million. And they're like, no. And they're like, all right, a billion. And they're like, okay. Oh, it's just getting more now, dude. It's like, uh, oh, like we'll Adobe, do, we'll do Adobe just bought that program. Do you know what the name of the program 11 was? $11 billion. This is what I mean. 11 billion. Dude, this is what I mean by the elite have to get taken down at some point. That is fucked. Because remember when it, remember when Candy Crush got bought for 2 billion and that was outrageous? Remember when Instagram was bought by Facebook for 1 billion? It was the first app yeah, to first make a billion. billion and it was like 8 people. Dude, now you're talking like 11 billion. That's, yeah. Dude, that's so much fucking money. The so much money. The CEO money. of the other company was like, We'll never be like Adobe. That's why we're successful because we're different. And then six months later, it was like, like dude, sold it for eleven anyone, billion to Adobe. If I ran any <laughs> so company, baller. if I if I owned SpaceX and someone offered me eleven billion dollars for it, I wouldn't sell it. But uh, I'd sell that company. That's for sure. I don't know. I think it's all. What about the? Um, did you hear about the CEO of Pantagonia? Yeah, he so he gave away his company. Basically, donated it. Yeah couple billion dollars donated brilliant man but it's also like feed everything just gets fed back into 
Yeah. It's like every every time you buy a Panagodia jacket, like the money's going to be like f- gone going it's back brilliant. to the company. And like, it's brilliant. It's what I would. Sweet, it's what I would hope most billionaires. I would hope be it works. Doing. I hope it actually the money gets places. But think if more billionaires were doing what he's doing, where they don't need more billions of dollars, and so if they have like one of their eight companies, it's a billion dollar company. If they just sold it or donated it the way he did. It's like, okay, at least you understand you don't fucking need more mm. and you have the ability to donate something like that's really going to help society or maybe possibly grow something bigger instead of just you. I don't, mm. I don't understand this idea of people with money wanting to just be more money where it's like, you're a billionaire. I want to be 10 billion. I want to be the first trillionaire. <laughs> Look at me. It's like, dude, doesn't yeah. that feel gross? Like, yeah, but I mean, like, who cares? Well, I, I mean, I care because we're the ones suffering, dude. Of course. That's like, that's a great answer. Yeah. It's like, because there's not just you in the world. There's like literally billions of people suffering. Yeah. Like most Americans, dude, I heard if, some crazy if there percentage. Was no, if there was no suffering, who gives a fuck what you do then? Like, right. like but there's so much suffering in our world. We've been talking about it. Yeah. So much well, no, fucking I, I, yeah, suffering. Of course, of course. Of so course. these billionaires making wanting... More billions and just billions, billions, billions. And they just keep billions. Here's well, Trump billions. not going to prison because he can pay the right what about lawyers. Earth Gang, you know the song Billy. Give me, I need a Billy, a Billy. I love billy. it because uh, Lil Wayne was, you know, a millionaire, a millionaire. What was the song? Oh my god, I can't remember that. Why am I forgetting? A milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli, a milli. A mi- and then a you milli, have Earth Gang like, give me a Billy. I need a Billy. Billy, you're like, oh wow, we made it. We now we're in the billions. Now we're, now rappers are wanting billions. And if billions. inflation keeps going, man, we're gonna be in the trillions pretty quick. Give me a trilly. Give me a trilly. Give me a trilly. We should write that. AOC with that trilly. She got that trilly. AOC with that trilly. Bro, if AOC comes up, trilly's not gonna happen. We're gonna even out some yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, you heard it here. She fucking knows it Good too. Good job, dude. bro. That's true, man. AOC gonna be like, give me your trilly. I'll flip dude, it into a and billy and do a million time? and make it in some tennies and give it to the babies. When was the last time we had a president that wasn't about to die? It's like, oh, I'm 85. Right, the youngest. President. Oh, Obama, baby. Exactly. Oh, that the mother- good oh. years, baby. The good. Yeah, dude. I think of Obama as the best president I've ever seen, obviously. But I, the history I've studied, oh, he God. was the best president we've ever oh, had. Oh, God. You know what? I, I, th- I could have become a I, – I, I was a believer then. I'm just kidding. I'm still a believer now. <laughs> so that's, that's the thing, though, life. is if AOC runs, I'm going AOC hard, going political. If Michelle Obama runs, AOC's down here, I am going very political. She has to win. She's already polling at 70% or Who's something, this? and she's not even Who? running. Michelle Obama. I know. Well, she, she it's, yeah, because Avi. It's crazy, man. So, right. how much time? We're, we're, we should be done. Real quick, the last thing we're going to talk about. Oh, these, this is just a great one that we can save for uh, Friday. But um, people are upset with the price of YouTube Premium. And I've been using YouTube Premium and have been wanting to use YouTube premium for a long time. And I finally made the jump about six months ago. And I'd like to, I think that it's wild that we get to try these different apps, people, Spotify, Apple music and YouTube music. It's like one that people, I don't hear people really using. And there's so many different things out there now, but uh, people are upset about YouTube premium, the price of it. Do you pay for YouTube premium? No, I love YouTube premium. It's amazing. I listen to everything and lock my phone. So I wanted to make that point that I think it's ridiculous that like Spotify costs 10 bucks a month, YouTube premium, and you can have 90, right? Isn't it 90 or is it 80? $15. Oh. And you can have like family members on it and everything. You know, you can have like two people so on it. So you're talking about YouTube just from like YouTube music premium. No, YouTube premium. So you can, every video and like thing that you're watching, you can lock your phone. It's ridiculous that they charge anything, these apps, just everything to do is a just, quick, easy, everything is a subscription. Fix. So it's like, cause it's all ad money that everyone's making, which yeah, that's yeah another thing. But anyways, I just thought that, like when I saw that and I was reading about it and I was like reading a bunch of comments on what people were like saying, it was like people are like, yeah, fuck that. I'm not going to pay 15. It's fucking bullshit. And I was just like, I get it. I guess 15 bucks a month is like, but remember cable? Like YouTube is the most amazing fucking. All I do is YouTube for the most part. I YouTube and I throw it to the TV. It's all my, so much of my entertainment. Well, in the, in the end, YouTube will win. It, I feel like it's been winning. Mm, Spotify still king. No way. Oh, yeah. 
Just get ready in the for the music these, world. Get, re- get ready though. It's like, gonna change quick. But get in ready the music for world. oh yeah, of course. But like TikTok is a king for the short game, short film game. YouTube mm-hmm. is uh, king for the long video game. Spotify is king for like the music game, right? I don't even know the numbers when it comes to Apple Music and all that. But YouTube will conquer the short game when YouTube short starts to fucking blow. Did you did you hear the new update in September? Insane. What is it? Uh, you can get. You can now make money off shorts. Really? So it used to just be. I did be, read this. Yeah. Yeah. So, like those couple shorts, we got a couple thousand views or something. If we are monetized, that actually might be a bump of change. How do we get fucking monetized? Get a thousand followers, baby. You mean subscribers? Yeah. Yeah, subscribe, please. Please, 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 should, please. That's funny please, that right at the very please. end of the episode, <laughs> subscribe to Those Boys Podcast. Uh, you should, Zach, you should take this video right here and put it at the front of the podcast. Okay. Subscribe. Hey, you. Viewer, let me try better. Yeah, do something better. Get, get, get. You want to go first? Okay. Subscribe, you fucking idiot. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, a little tough. I'm always going to hush my. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Please subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks. I like that. (laughs) What's up, those boys fans? Thank you so much for joining us today. First things first, please subscribe down below. Hit that like button. Hit the fucking like button. Mm. Thanks. Thanks. Was that cringe or that was, what? Was for sure, but you might get some likes. The goal is to, I've learned that cringe people like cringe because cringe isn't cringe for everybody. They just get this weird, warm, fuzzy feeling where they're like, yeah. And I can tell you right now, our short, if we actually release it, we're still not sure if we're going to, is very cringe. It's so cringe. So cringe. Uh, Like once we edit it, we'll see see if it's going to be good. good. I just, yeah, dude, that's tough. That's cringe. Yeah, I know. But that was a great episode. Cool. Um, Thanks for uh, listening. Anyone that's gotten this far. Thanks everybody for whoever's at. Listen, watch us. We really appreciate you. And uh, tell all your friends and family and uh, that those boys ain't going anywhere. And... And that you should just subscribe. And thanks. Yeah. And just subscribe. And just thanks, subscribe. thanks, Zach, for editing these. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Zach. And yeah, thanks, Zach. Thanks, Zach. No, honestly, you're going to burn out soon. And, and then you're going to come up. I hope that I hope the podcast lasts. <laughs> I hope it lasts. No, you're going to come up. Baby. Thanks, man. We got you coming in. All right. Episode six. Boom.